Meet me at Standing Rock. I say that to everybody. If sacred land can be taken over by corporations, then none of our indigenous communities are protected, including my own. People are waking up. People are saying no more. Society took our land away from us. We need to protect it. I will start a fight for this place. There is no turning back for us. Despite all of the hatred and genocide, we're still here and we're resilient. I am not moving till every pipe is removed from the earth. We cannot change the political system until the people control the land. Until rise! Uh, it felt good for me to be there, but it felt better because of what I was seeing. And I've seen gatherings over the years, but this was a gathering that had Oh, it, it was going. It was, had a different purpose. They were bringing their tribal flags. Uh, during the first uh, two or three weeks, I, I saw the uh, one one flag go up. I, I sensed a, a a much stronger nation, a much stronger nationhood uh, forming. And that this is what I I. I, I felt was, was beautiful. I have not seen this kind of gathering uh, and bringing in support. I have never seen it in my entire life. Wounded knee was one kind of action, uh, but it, it, it was nothing in terms of, of, of people coming together. Every weekend I'd, I'd, I'd come back and then I'd see five more flags, 10 more flags, 20 more flags, 100 flags, and the, the, the community building. And I would say within the sixth or seventh week, it was no longer an encampment. It was a community. Because now we, we had about 4,000 people there, mm -hmm. uh, but it reached a, a peak by, by a Labor Day weekend of 10,000 people. Just seeing all of this develop, it, it made me feel that we needed, we needed Standing Rock. And the American Indian Movement needed it. Why didn't this happen mm -hmm. years ago? Why, why didn't we as Native people band together before like this? But it seems to me that need was needed US-wide. I think that's why, that's why it, that's why it did come about. Mm. It's really a, this is the this is a true, true feeling of what has been lost mm. with with a lot of us. Mm -hmm. uh, Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. They also Dave says Dennis. We didn't know what was going. When we took the stand against the, the Dakota Access Pipeline. We didn't know what was going to happen out there unprecedented support came in that, that other tribes uh, now realize that that we can we can be victorious on this one if we stick together and you know hold together well uh, the the pipeline well there's several pipelines but probably about 30 40 pipelines that are going underneath all across the United States and even on our reservation, the Chippewa Reservation in northern Minnesota, one came through ours with very little resistance. We don't, my mm -hmm. family went out there and was trying to say, no, do it. you don't, can't go any further than this, but you know, please show up. But the pipeline, and digging up stuff, uh, and when, uh, and our Shambo and them did a, a great deal of research on on their property, and then there are, there's, the Environmental Protection Agency has listed five, five species endangered. Uh, there's the, the two whooping, uh, whooping crane and another crane called the least tern, T-E-R-N, and then the black-footed ferret, uh, the, the pallid sturgeon, and also the gray wolf. 
These are all endangered species. But also, this land where they're, they were mm -hmm. coming to is a burial site. And that is why the Standing Rock Sioux tribe said, nope. Now, the, the, the Corps of Engineers called the um, Standing, Standing Rock Sioux tribe and talked to Dave. They talked, he said, he remembers they talked for about 15 minutes. And then when, it, when the news starts coming out, the, the Corps of Engineers says, well, we consulted with the tribe. And, and that's when Dave Arsambo and the, and the tribal council says, uh-oh, wait a while. 15 minutes on the phone is not consultation and, and gi giving permits to these people to come through that property. We have burial grounds there. There's animals there. There's this, you know, all these species, endangered species. We're going to stop it right now. And so they, 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 they filed their lawsuit against the, uh, against the, um, not only the, the Corps of Engineers for issuing those permits to these people, uh, but also to the state of, state of North Dakota for allowing them to, they, nobody consulted with the, with the, with the tribe about mm. digging, uh, digging, going through bear grounds. And, and then the, another aspect of the pipeline going underneath the Missouri River, mm -hmm. and some of it won't go all the way underneath, but we've seen them going through the underneath the river at the laying on the on the bottom of the uh, of the bed there uh, the riverbed that of course the the, the 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 history of safety and the leaks and the disruptions with the with the Dakota uh, access pipeline is terrible they you know and they said we have a good record of safety no it's not it's not <laughs> It's contaminated the soil back there, contaminated the water back there, and it's contaminating the air. Now you're bringing it here. And we're saying no. And our Shambo and him went out there, went right out to the site, said, no, you're going to stop right here. He got arrested. Travel council members also standing with him, they got arrested. The, the tribe is, uh, I mean, the Dakota Access pipeline is is on a terribly wrong side of history on this one and just it's bad I mean they they're stand, they say we stand behind our, our record of safety and but they they can't it, and if that if any of that leakage goes into the Missouri River it's going to destroy not only the river itself in that area but all downstream mm -hmm. and it, it'll be catastrophic danger happening so, so that's, you know, we, we are, the tribal nations in this country understand from time, when time first began, that, that we had the responsibility of being a caretaker. And that responsibility is very great and huge, and it never ends. And we assume that I've been hearing that since I was a kid about, you know, you got to take care of the land. You got to take care of the land. Take care of the water. You got to take care of the air. And you got to take care of the soil. We have a walk every day, as I mentioned, all the way up to the site. And a lot of, a lot of grandmas and moms make that walk. And one particular day, we saw the, the, the bulldozers scraping, and they, they were not supposed to be doing that. Not, and, uh, and the grandmas and the moms decided to cross over the, the territory onto their land. Yes, they were trespassing at that point, but they went over there and they were going to stop the scraping. And they got really close and they told them, they told these guys, that we were going to stop you. You're not going to, you're not going to dig up our graves. You're not going to tamper with any of that, you know, that sacredness of, of our people buried there. And then all of a sudden the dogs came out, you know, they were, trying to hold them like that, and then they were singing the dogs loose. They, they, they didn't set them loose, but they, they were on a long leash, and they're letting them out, and they were attacking the women. And then, of course, the warriors just came forward and started, started there, there was a lot of pushing and shoving, and um, it, was, it was horrendous to, to see these dogs. You know, you, you picture sights of, 
1953, 1954, when Bull Connors mm. had all those had all those dogs, you know, and they're they're singing them on on the the, the walkers from Selma. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you telling that, the dogs? Oh man, it, it was terrible. And, the dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. It is still standing here threatening. You can't put your blame on the dog. You're an against evil your woman. Own you can't animal. put your blame on the fucking dog. That's this treatment against your own animal. You will live with that. But the, the women, even after getting bit there like that, and they, one of them had to go to the, well, they all went to the hospital, the ones that all got bit up. But they stood there. They just stood there. They weren't going to move, even after being bitten. And then, of course, the, then you see signs too. I mean, pictures of the dog turning on each other, and, and, and it was it was bad. It was bad for for to see women and children being being bit. Security has some kind of gas. People are being pepper sprayed. Reporter from New York, what are you spraying people with? I haven't sprayed anything, man. But what is that? Yeah, it just makes me in the face right now. Dog bit him right now. Dog on me. Look at this. Look at this. Let me say. Let me say. the dog on me. No, you did it on purpose. Let me say. Let me say. Yeah, keep on the dog. What happened? I just a lot of maize and the sweat was run. Uh, uh, dripping it into it was the sweat was making it run down into my eyes. I got maced twice. I got bit by a dog. I was front line. I was Where did you get bit? I got bit on the ankle over my booties. So I told them they needed to leave, but the, the guy didn't believe me. So he didn't want to listen. He uh, stuck his hand out and he, sp he maced me. Uh, this other guy, and I think he maced a, a lady too. Then. They, they, they tried getting the dogs on us, so I was, I was just standing there, I wasn't really doing nothing. That dog ran up on me and it bit my, around my ankle. I hope we've accomplished letting Enbridge know that the people of this nation and the people of this world, tribal or otherwise, have withdrawn their social license to pollute water and that they need to find an honest, nonviolent way to make a living. Why is this such an important fight to you? Because... Water is life. Like I said, without water, we'd all, we wouldn't be here. These, these plants wouldn't be here. There'd be no oxygen. We all die without it. I, I wish they'd open their eyes and have a heart to realize, you know, if this happens, we're not going to be the only ones going to suffer. They're going to suffer too. That, that's the sadness of, of what, but the, but the pipeline struggle goes on. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we, we We'll continue to, to battle them in court. Uh, even though they've done wrong things against us um, on, the, on the field, uh, we're not moving. And it, um, I thought after the dogs, they were gonna bring the guns. Mm. And I'm sure that the security would, their security would want to use weapons. They brought them. And when you bring the weapons to a fight, then you're, you're, you, you want to use them. Well, there's, there's, a, there's about five companies, including Philips, including Shell, uh, who are waiting for some of that oil to be refined, and then they're, they're, they're investors. Um, so oh, they're the ones that uh, that are propelling the pipeline because they, it's a quite about, I don't know how many, hundred billions or, or billion, $35 billion invested on this already. We're, we're listening to the history of, of, of our people that are buried there. We're listening to the animals that are being hurt. From where they're at, the, the pipeline coming this way. And I think they deliberately took their machinery over here to, to do and provoke uh, an incident. Um, 
Well, of course it did provoke. We're standing at the construction site of the Dakota Access Pipeline. It looks like there are at least three bulldozers that are, to people's surprise at this moment, uh, actually bulldozing the land. There's a helicopter above, there's security here, and hundreds of people have been marching up when they heard that the construction site is actually active. These, these, the people that were on, they went out of their way to come scrape over here and dig. I think that they were kind of laying the lance down. They were laying, the, you know, the, they wanted to fight. I think the, the state of uh, North Dakota, they, they, they've also had a bad history of protecting the sites of Native Americans all across North Dakota. And I, I don't want to say each, each governor's been you know, racist, but there, there's a lot of racism that are still exists in, in, in North Dakota and South Dakota. I think that's part of the reason is that they, a lot of money is going to be, as long as that pipeline is flowing through North Dakota, they're going to be making money. Treaties, that? yeah, that, that come into play. One is, is the 1851 treaty, uh, Fort Laramie treaty, and the, the other one is the 1868 treaty. Um, and so they both, uh, they both are, 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 both signatories of the of the U.S. government are on it, plus the chiefs, Red Cloud signatures on, on mm -hmm. them, and saying that, uh, that that our land will be never be disturbed. As a matter of fact, that was one of the uh, statements that the that the in the early in making the the, the, the U.S. government uh, the lands and the properties of Native people will never be be disturbed. The history of the of, of putting us on land that what they thought was no value to the land. And, uh, and suddenly, you know, in many places, there's, there's natural resources. Find, find the riches, find the resources, and you'll find change of, change of, 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 the, of the policy between the government and the Native people. Change the, change the understanding, change the, the, the target. And so every place is filled with uh, gold. You find gold on the reservations. Find oil it's on the reservations. Change, change the language of the treaties. Change, change the treaties. Make a new treaty. And that's what they did. I don't, I don't think they want us to, to, to be part of the, the, of the, of the meanness of, of the United States. <clears throat> That's what it is. They're very mean. You know, history's been, they, they've been mean to us, and they, they've hurt us. Uh, and I don't think they want that shown forever. But as long as I'm alive, I'm going to say this is what happened in 1890. This is what happened in 1864 at Sand Creek Massacre. And time and time again, there's been pain and hurt. <laughs> Next tonight here to the new flashpoint in the pipeline showdown in North Dakota. Hundreds of protesters clashing with police in riot gear, trying to block the pipeline's construction. After several demonstrators tried to remove burnt out vehicles from the backwater bridge, they were joined by hundreds of others who lined up in front of the police barricade. All that tear gas, my chest hurt for like maybe a week. It was pretty traumatizing. You know, that I had to see all that. And, uh, it was hard to see it, and it's even hard to talk about it right now. Police described the night of November 20th as a riot. You all right? Well, they just shot him for speaking. They shot him. The Standing Rock Medic and Healing Council reported over 300 injuries that evening, with 26 having to be taken to the hospital.
sisters, they, they went through a terrible time in their lifetime and right now they can't even rest at peace. Their remains can't rest at peace because of the destruction of the pipeline. Let's escalate it before we try everything to defend our people. But that's why the Youth Council really speaks out about staying there in prayer and to stay peaceful. Because this is a ceremony and we have to protect what we have here and that's our prayer. And that's just one thing that can't stop. development in the long-running standoff over the Dakota Access Pipeline. A major victory for the Sioux Tribe at Standing Rock. The Army Corps of Engineers halted construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. On December 4, 2016, the Army announced it would not approve the easement needed for the pipeline to cross the Missouri River. Prior to his election, Donald Trump's presidential campaign received more than $100,000 from Kelsey Warren, the CEO of Energy Transfer Partners. Trump also held significant investments in the companies involved with the construction and operation of the Dakota Access Pipeline. And although Trump claimed to have since purged himself of such investments, he has offered no substantial proof of that claim. And in the meantime, he has selected Rick Perry, who has sat on the Energy Transfer Partners board, to head the Department of Energy. Less than a week after taking office, Trump signed a memorandum ordering the Army Corps of Engineers to review and approve the pipeline in an expedited manner. We love this land. And half of the time I feel bad because they make us feel bad for loving this land. But most important, we love the water. Every year our people sacrifice. We go four days without drinking water so that it reminds us how important this water is. And I ask everybody, do you go with four days without water? What happens to your body on that third day? Your body starts shutting down. So, so we remind ourselves every day how important. We say, Mini Wachoni, water of life. Every time we drink water, we say, Mini Wachoni, water of life. We cannot live without water. So I don't understand why America doesn't understand how important water is. So we have no choice, we have to stand. No matter what happens, we have to stand to save the water. LaDonna Brave Bull Allard, tribal historian for the Standing Rock Sioux, speaking to us on the morning of September 3rd, the day the Dakota Access Company unleashed dogs and pepper spray against Native American land defenders, biting a number of them. It was also the 153rd anniversary of the Whitestone Massacre, when the U.S. Army killed 300 members of the Standing Rock Sioux Nation.